welcome to the Beyond Clerk podcast. My name's Johnny from Johnny Bentley 360 and here at Beyond Clerks. Uh, we gave our intros properly first time, but I'm a professional photographer of four to five years, working with models, landscapes and general uh, 360 creative sort of photography. My partner in crime here on the show is Gemma. Gemma Lee Photography. Um... 20 plus years uh, photography and modelling now. <laughs> so uh, I kind of covered it mostly in the first one, we even discussed all the different kind of things I've done. So if you want to kind of go back and check that out, please do. Yes. So this is our second episode today, and we're going to be discussing, we're actually pinpointing more disabilities and how us as photographers, as well as us as, you know, well, modelling as Gemma, can actually assist with disabilities and make people more aware and the common misconceptions and just generally, you know, the nitty gritty of working with disabilities and so, stuff in the modeling yeah. industry. For so those who didn't uh, listen to our first one or watch it, um, we did cover that subject a little bit because I am disabled and plus size and there was different parts of the industry I can access as a disabled person. So one of our main features, we'll start off, is that we at Beyond Clerks in Stockport uh, is we have a ground floor studio. Now we're in one of the old fashioned sort of mills that a lot of photography studios seem to be in, obviously other than like people's houses and stuff like that. But we we picked ground floor. We picked the ground floor, but that was more as we chose that, yes, for clients, but it was more for you yeah, as so, a photographer, so you could access yeah, and still so come in. Pre-lockdown, I was doing photography at another studio. Um, they moved locations, and I now can't access that public space. I still fully support them, and uh, they support us. I mean, one of their family members came and helped us build some stuff here. Um, Go so check out Street Star. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd still be there if I could, but I'm really happy that you kind of encouraged me with this space because uh, post lockdown I then had a child and uh, I had a little bit of a meltdown and thought I couldn't do this anymore because my, my disabilities were quite bad. Well you were worried you were just going to be a mum and yeah. being in bed all day and with your disabilities. I, I couldn't really yeah. do yeah. the stay at home mum. It's not me. Photography is definitely a big part of my life and you kind of like, right, let's do this, let's get a space that you can still access and do stuff. And then I kind of had that, well, there's loads of other people I know who can't access studios, this is an amazing idea. The only, I suppose, negative that we have uh, in our studio is there isn't a disabled toilet, disabled access toilet. So when we do have uh, disabled clients, I mean, we had uh, a lady in a wheelchair, didn't we, for a cosplay shoot, and uh, we had to sort of pre-warn her was uh, obviously, yeah, we're happy to shoot, we could be here as long as you can, but we don't have them facilities, so just keep that in mind, you yeah, know. Yeah, so rather than them being able to stay a full day, they did a partial day and then went on so they could go to the toilet and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it is something we're looking at, though. Yes. Um, yeah. We start bringing in some more money. We've already discussed with the landlord about taking on some more of the space and taking another unit and kind of having our own disabled toilets on the side and things. Yeah. But we, the whole point of us was that it's ground floor, we, we've got double doors that can open wide, our changing area is accessible, just about, so yeah. I mean, do you know... Uh, the actual entrance to get in here, you can literally park at the doors and literally just yeah. to get in the building, it's an amazing space. But, no, we're not here to tell you about our place, it's more about how can other people make themselves accessible. Now I know a lot of studios, sometimes are on the top floor of mills, now, I appreciate some of them have lifts, but we all yeah, know what lifts I was gonna are say, like in Melbourne. The, the only like. problem, I mean, when we looked at this place, was they offered an upstairs one originally, yeah. but it's an old mill lift, and a lot of old mill lifts, they give up. Especially if it gets to the cold time of year, they, the old systems can't run as well. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a lift on site or not. If it's not one that's regularly checked out and kind of always working, you can't advertise that as a thing. So, as a disabled model, yep. You, somebody's asked you to come and do a shoot, what would you do to prepare about the place and to know what, 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 like, what things are going to get in your way? Yes. I know so, not all websites have stairs and no, things like that. Uh, so I usually try to discuss with the photographer directly. 
Um, whether it's accessible uh, by an Uber or public transport, because one of the main things is being able to physically get there. Yeah. And then what the entrance is like, if there's going to be stairs or not. Obviously, if you drive parking, that's yeah. what we don't at the moment, but it's one of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, you know, if it is on a different floor, is there a lift that's working on site? And I've also done it before with photographers. I've said, look, if you're going to be at the studio before I'm jibbing, can you check that the lift is working before I make my way there? Because the journey alone would take a lot of energy out of my day and therefore I wouldn't be able to do other things. So how does that affect you, say, if you've had to do a flight stairs? Well, I can't do flight stairs anymore, but when I could, I'd do the flight stairs, I'd do the shoot, and then that would be it. I couldn't do anything else that day. I'd then kind of have to have two or three days rest. Okay. Which, when I was doing it as a job, then two or three days not working. Okay. And it does have an impact in the long run. Okay, that's fair enough. So uh, we're not saying don't go to studios that are upstairs, but it's, it's just taking that into account. Yeah. But bear in mind, I used to do a lot of location shooting. So a lot of my, I say secret locations, are not so secret, but where I sort of tend to meet, I'd always get there half an hour, an hour before. There was somebody somewhere that I've been before. So I also know how to get there and make sure that it's on the ground floor as a photographer. But also that I'd have that conversation with a model. Like when we first met and doing a location shoot, I was aware that it was like a grassy path, but it was still kind of flat. There was just a few little muddy bits, but you sort of still managed so, in with... Yeah, yeah. And I, I bought a chaperone yes. in case yeah. I struggled with moving. Um, that's one thing a lot of photographers, some people don't want chaperones. It doesn't matter whether you're disabled or not, chaperones are important. We will be touching more on this. On chaperone and the safety sort of thing. But a late date. But and we will sort of think, as photographers, I'm happy for anybody to bring a chaperone. I think it's number one safety, Dis disability yeah. sort of anything it's number one fine as long as that chaperone isn't going to get in the way of the shoot yeah and when i say that it's sort of oh i've just brought my best friend and the giggling getting drunk all day in the background saying oh haha don't you look silly doing that but that sort of stuff's going to distract me it's going to distract the model it's not <coughs> excuse me a good working environment but for safety sort of things i mean we've had a model bring them on yeah some sort of thing she was lovely sat in the corner. We've had uh, a family shoot where the dad's sort of come along and then he's ended up being in the photos, sort of thing, even though he didn't want to be in the photos. It was sort of... He just felt that relaxed. He just felt that... Exactly. It's it's one of them that uh, we're a big sort of advocate, not just for safety, but also, I mean, like you said, you brought uh, your good friend along, a chaperone sort of thing, but... He was there for helping you with your stick and stuff like that. So what a lot of uh, studios I found, as my disabilities have got worse over the years, because I have multiple yeah. degrading conditions, is trying to explain to them that it's not just a chaperone for me. I have to have someone who is a point of care, who is aware of what's going to go on medically. If they need to contact someone you know, to deal with what's going on, they need someone with that knowledge. Uh, I've worked with disabled models in the past who require two or three carers. That needs to be considered as well, and I found a lot of photographers they don't like other people being there. But if you're going to work with people who do have disabilities, especially if they're physical ones, they're going to need those other staff around them just in case. Okay, so you as a model, you've got to your thing, you've crawled up three flights of stairs. Not that that would happen, but you've got there. Yep. How then would you need special circumstances to actually do the shoot? Uh, do you need the photographer to hold your hand as you do a thing, or is it more you just need to take more breaks? I need it's, to take yeah. lots of breaks and kind of pace myself. That's yeah. me personally. Everyone has their different things. Um, I have had it before where I've had to wear heels for a shoot. I can't actually wear heels because um, in my ankles the bones have kind of gone now, so I can't wear them. So you put them on, on sat I down. Them on yeah. for the shoe. So I always, if I haven't got someone with me, I make sure like there's another model or something I'll kind of talk to if it's on a group shoot. Could you just help me get my shoes on when I get in position? And you make. To be fair, um, I think that's across most models. So it's, it's not just yeah, disabled, but it's, do, one, you, it's, it's one of them. Yeah. It's, but yeah. there are these kind of, you need to give time for those elements as well. Yeah. Okay. But what could the, uh, say, generally, I'm not saying that this doesn't happen, but what would you say could a photographer do to help? 
that situation? Um, so it depends on the space. Some spaces do provide and some don't. Mm -hmm. It's a, an area where you can sit down, have a nice drink and kind of compose. So like a drink out area, yeah. basically. Yeah. Because a lot of studios I've been in the past, they've got somewhere like with a mirror where you can do your makeup and stuff. Some don't even have a chair at that point, <laughs> which I've really not understood. Uh, but somewhere where you can sit down that isn't about getting dressed and getting ready, it's just about composing yourself and getting yourself ready. Especially if it's a group shoot as well and you're going to be waiting around. Waiting around standing up with disabilities becomes a problem because that then cuts down your shoot time and you probably have to leave earlier in the day because you've used up all your energy just stood around. The other thing I would say is, I mean, I'm not disabled. I fall over wires all the time in studios. Oh, it's one of my pet hates. We try and keep everything to the outside. That's We've got plugs everywhere, so we don't have to have training wires across. I mean, if somebody walked in seeing what we've got set up today, you'll probably see that there's a lot of training wires, but we kind of, we're, this is our podcast yeah, setup. I'm, we're I'm not moving until he's moving the wires out the way. <laughs> but it's one of them that, is that something that can be made easier? Yeah, so I've worked at studios in the past where they've had like a couple of PowerPoints that they then need to run extension cables to the different areas. If you've got a space like that, like the reason we pick this space as well is there is multiple plugs throughout the entire room, so we don't need to have trailing wires. Or, I mean, I've seen it before where people get uh, ceiling rigs that are really good, so there's no wires at all. I was going to say, surely taping down because we do that. Tape, the taping down, stuff, yeah. If, we, when we're in spaces where there is no other options, yeah. then. Tape down, it's quite obvious, it's basic common sense. If you're going to tape down some wires, do it in the tape that's going to stand out against the floor. So say we've got a black floor, don't use the black tape. There's no point, it's still going to be a trip hazard. Please, hazard line. Please hazard line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, can literally sense. use yeah, OTT yeah, yeah. neon tape. But I suppose that comes down to normal health and safety. It's not yeah. necessarily just but, for disabled, but... But what I found with and more of a hobby photographers is... They don't know basic health and safety if it's just something they do every now and again. So they won't consider, well, that's, that's not in the way, it's fine. But then later on in the day, they want to change sets. Well, they haven't moved that wire because it's not the first thing that comes to their head. I've also noticed some personal experience with you, Jam, is it's not just wires. When, when you're getting tired, yes. you tend to get more... <laughs> We call it wobbly yeah. between the two of us. Um, but it's sort of, yeah, you, you, you're more likely to turn around or step back and knock something. Yeah. So I personally... Well, I've, I've really, had this yeah. with models who don't have disability as well because of the fatigue that comes yes. with working in the industry, yeah. where they get so tired that they kind of, as they're moving, they'll knock into things. So just being aware and conscious of that's kind of number one. And well. just keep the space clear and tidy. Yeah. I mean, that... It, I sound like I'm in one of these health and safety sort of videos no, now. We, it's like, we, we, we clean your workspace. <laughs> no, sort we, of, yeah, we literally like... went to a studio and had to clean it before the client got oh, there. Yes, we it did. was so yeah. disgusting. It was discovered there was pots, there was beer bottles everywhere, and it was just one of and them that like it's it kind never of... Been cleaned. Yeah. And this was before we had our own space, and I was like, please never let us get one like that. Yes, yes, so... We're going to be on top of it all the time. I mean, in Mel's, you get dust. I'm not going to lie, there's always dust everywhere, whatever you do, but... It's that sort of, we always make a point of when we come to a studio, we co well, come we to always come early. we come an hour early so we can sort of pre-set up, we can make sure everything's clean, there's the kettle's filled, all that sort of stuff, and then we're here on hand if they're stuck, getting directions so we can drive them in, meet them at the door, that sort of stuff. But that's our own sort of experience. There might be a time where we're running late, we haven't had that yet, but that's the sort of thing, but we kind of... When we leave the studio, we always make sure that it's sort of ready to go for the next time. Yes. It's kind of so it's rather than just leaving everything everywhere and lights and plugs and I just don't get how people live in that. But it's yeah, it's to me. Or or if or if you know what's coming in next, you preset it if you can. Yeah. So then you've got less work when you next come back in. So going forward. The other side of this is not every disability is visible. This we is get true. it all the time. Yeah. So it's more, there's obviously lots of mental disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, people on the spectrum, so, neurodivergent, all that. How does that take into account? And as a photographer and as a studio, how could you prepare for that, I suppose? It's like, so a lot of studios uh, have kind of release forms with their images or a consent form for taking part. Yeah. A lot of studios don't have, which 
And you're getting more of it now than you used to, but they didn't have. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Mm. Now, as this person who is neurodivergent, I always make sure I'm like, right, well, I've got this, this, and this, and here's my emergency. Is there enough space in that box, Jim? Not always. No, okay. <laughs> but I always make sure I give as much information as I can yes. and a contact number in case of emergency. It should always be that kind of fail safe in place. Um, like I said, with me, I've got obviously a walking phone, a walking stick, and mine's more of use of my physical stuff. But then my mental health and stuff doesn't come across. I'm very no. good at masking as well as a lot and of I'm sure a lot of people are, yeah. yeah. It's like, I mean, things like, and I'm not meaning to cover everything, but things like epilepsy and stuff like that, you would presume if you go into a photography studio, you're not going to be light sensitive because of flashes well, no, and stuff well, like that. But we well, have I to ask still that always question. ask, are you okay with flash yes. photography? Um, a lot of studios don't have both. Yes. I think you should always have a combination of your still lights and your flashlights because the permanents are really good for people who can't deal with flashes. And it's not just if they're epileptic. So I've got people I know who've got sensory overload, too many flashes. Sorry, that was presumptuous of me. No. But it was, it, that's what yeah. you, you the, the, sort There's of other saying, elements so, yeah. and like... Um, I know a young lady who is quite autistic and the lights for her become too intense. So mm. you have to have them dull, like dulled down almost. Yeah. And then you kind of set your camera to... The right settings to be yeah. put that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you allow for that and you, you were aware. Um, and also making sure as you're shooting to check on people as well. A lot of people don't do that. So when I've worked with this lady in the past, I've literally asked her, do you need a moment? Because you can kind of tell, you get you get clever after a while. Well, you normally can tell in the facial experience yeah. of the modelling. Or, or yeah. like if you've got someone with ADHD and they've been sat still doing the posing really well and they all, all of a sudden start fidgeting and can't pose, you're like, do you just need a moment to go for a walk or do you just need a drink or, you know, you have to be kind of on the ball for that. I do always work. This is nothing against that. I do always love working with the little gremlins that they all turn into. Yes. Well, you know, when they all get giddy at the end and they've got sweets and it's like, yeah, they're bouncing off the chairs. But sometimes you get some really great pictures that yeah. way. It's, it's kind of... Uh, I think neurodiversity is so common in the modelling industry now. Yeah, it's in the creative industry. But, it's definitely... Yeah. Well, no, I think if you're neurodiverser, you kind of, you're wired different to the world, so you're going to be more kind of drawn to creativity and the colour and vibrance of that world. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I think you kind of hit the point, so is, is really as a photographer, all you can really do is ask the questions and yeah. check on them as they're going on. But it's, it's, like, it's making sure to ask the questions in the right way so you yes. don't offend yeah. as well. Yeah. It but, is a very fine line. Because one of the big things you've had time. this, haven't you, is, is not, being, not being spoken to like a child. Or dumbed down. I mean, you shouldn't anyway. Yeah, so I've had it where someone's thought, oh, well, she's disabled and she's got these other problems. And then they talk to me like I'm a child and it's like, I'm still intelligent. I'm still able to hold a conversation and know what I'm doing. And I'll tell you if I have a problem. You'll find this a lot as well with people who've got long-term conditions. We know our limits and we will tell you. But when it's someone who's kind of newly diagnosed, they'll kind of just... They can have that crash and yeah. burn sort of, yeah, where they get to the point where they just, not, not yeah. faint, hopefully, but nobody no, ever gets to that. But they, they won't they, know yeah. their limits yet, yeah. and, yeah. and it's up to you as the photographer to kind of notice the signs that they're starting to kind of slow down, they need a moment. I mean, and we're not saying that you're all carers and you all need to sort of look yeah. after them, but technically they're in your space, they're yeah. your sort of priority. At the end of the day, if they get hurt or pass out, yeah. You're not going to get the pictures. So, like, you're not going to get paid or get one, the creative. One of the things we always do is we always make sure we've got hot drinks on, yeah. on standby. Um, we're getting a fridge soon, please. Yes. And we're going to have cold drinks as well. Uh, and water. Water's yeah. always a good one to make sure they're hydrated because models are the worst with remembering to hydrate. I am guilty as charged. I used to be really bad at that. Um, we do we, tend to always have snacks. We have snacks it's as well. Of, we try to have a, a mix of snacks because yeah. of. We have people who are vegan who come here as well, so we make sure there's something for all taste buds. And if they forgot to eat on the way in, which you do get a lot, especially those who do it full time, they've been on the road for several days and then literally just get through the door like, I've not stopped yet. And it's like, right, have We're a brew, that, have something to eat. Yeah, everyone's guilty of that. So me and Jem do uh, events, don't we? So we've yeah. done, like, well, relatively recently, we did uh, the big Comic-Con in Liverpool, we were helping the event. 
I mean, we had a, one of the big double bag, like Ikea bags of snacks, snacks and drinks. But then we realised after two days, when you're not eating properly and only eating snacks and drinks, is, I mean, you were pretty much two weeks where you were... Yeah, it took me two weeks to record. That you were sort well, of non-functional. But yeah, even me, amazing. quite healthy, still needed a few days recovery yeah. because I was crashy and stuff. And you don't look after it. You, you, when you're at events and stuff like that, and you should. It's yeah. so simple, just, just go and eat, take a break. And I think that's why... I'm not trying to just bring it back to us, but especially when we're doing a full day shoot, we I do think... like to take a lunch break or have a break. Like, we're going to have a brew here and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, so I think that's kind of the whole point of, is just be aware of your surroundings, but also be aware of other people. Yeah. So as a photographer... And, and, and there's, there's also the factor as well, like um, years ago, we did a shoot out in Bolton and they had no heating on site, but they yeah. had... They didn't have anything that you could get warm with either and what they didn't they kind of forgot to tell you is like it's going to be really cold this building is horrendous and if i'd have known that going in i would have took extra layers just in case uh we've had it when we've had models in i literally go look we've got some costume bits here do you need to put on some extra layers just be aware that your environment is going to be warm enough or cool enough depending on the weather uh the biggest one we had was we had a group shooting um, it was the hottest day of the year. Day. Like... And we had this giant plan, and we thought that was going to be enough, and it wasn't. So we 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 kind of learned from that, yeah. and we're like, right, when it comes to that time of year, maybe have less models or get another big fan or something. It's just being aware. Or not work with a plus size brand that's brought their winter collection of hoodies on the hottest <laughs> day of the year. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, we were brilliant, and we all sort of survived. But I was dripping in just the vest, never mind you guys that were actually modelling at the time, because you helped model that day, you come out of retirement, hadn't you? Uh, but it was one of them that, just seeing them all, bless and having the makeup touched up, I yeah, straight away we, we, we had to have like, um, paper towels on hand to dab yeah, sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this, I mean, we're quite lucky in the fact that we are a ground floor on the metal, but we tend to get a lot of the heat from the other units, the other units nice around thing. us. So even what we're middle of, end of December, it's pouring rain, typical Manchester weather outside and in here we're quite warm, I'm just in a t-shirt and quite warm but then in the winter, it's uh, in the summer it's actually quite cool in mm -hmm. here we do have the big fans and stuff like that so touch wood we're quite lucky with that, we've not had to get but, super but extra it's definitely because... something you need to take into consideration, you're disabled or not yes. making sure that your models are okay and it's not too hard or cold but I do feel if you are disabled you're more likely to be affected yeah, I, I, I've found when I've worked with the same clients is the weather does impact their abilities. So at the moment, for myself, I'm back on my walking frame at the minute because my hips completely shot because the cold weather's got to it. Yeah. But I know when I start to get a bit warmer, I won't have to sit in a weird position. You can't see if you're just listening, but I've literally got my leg up on the turf chair, so it doesn't hurt me. I can have a conversation because it hurts too much to have both my legs down at the minute. It makes it look like she's chilling out and sort of relaxing here, but <laughs> it is actually more for pain. It is kind of, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's what you sort of have to do. I mean, we have lots of chairs. We probably have an abundance of chairs that we don't actually need in our studio. But that's because I like to sit when I'm shooting. And I need Sometimes to take breaks. you need to take breaks. And then we've always got extra chairs for people if they do bring a chaperone or they need to just take a break. And some of them are quite quick. I mean, we call one of them our, you know, burlesque chair, don't we? But it's like, it's a very small wooden chair that you can really just throw under way. someone to sort of, right, have a minute. Okay, and let's move on, sort of. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I just feel as though. That should be a given. I mean, you don't want to mess you up your studio, like if you, especially if you've got a big fashion cove oh, and all yeah, that. You, you still, but need you to still have... have them features around. Yeah. It's like because otherwise, people you're going to have accidents. People are going to sort of pass out, or people won't come back because they weren't comfortable. They weren't comfortable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, like I said, the open discussion, the release forms is really good kind of having that. But some people don't tell you as well. Yeah. I know quite a few people with hidden disabilities who don't help them because they think it's going to affect their workflow. And they don't, and I don't think know. they have to say. It's well, one of them like, is any job, you don't but have if, to. But, but, but if you know it's going to impact you, a little word in the kind of like, I might have issues with this. So models, if you're listening, 
if you do have problems, just be a bit more kind of aware and tell people if you're going to be struggling because they might see that, especially if you're kind of, you have a weird wincing pain face, which like I have, um, it, it looks like I've got kind of resting, can I say bitch? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Resting yeah. bitch face when I'm in pain. I mean, earlier on today, you thought I was angry at you because I had that tone in my voice because I was in was. pain. Oh, okay. um, but you don't want people to take the wrong impression of you because you're struggling. No, but like, so going back to when we first shot together, I was made aware that you, I mean, we had shot before, briefly, haven't we? Yeah. But you made me aware that you had walking issues and this sort of stuff and certain mm -hmm. poses. But we were actually going to quite a wooded area mm -hmm. and you were kind of not not getting hurt. It was a large ratio, mm -hmm. basically, but with forests around you and you're gonna end up climbing into trees. Well, not climbing, but you know that, right? you know, <laughs> sort of peering around trees and foliage and sort of hanging out. And some of the ground that's not on the path wasn't the smoothest. Yeah. So I mean at one point I remember Annie was throwing a stick to you. Yeah. So you know to sort of help in the help with our hands and stuff like that. Now if Gemma hadn't made me aware of that, mm -hmm. I as a photographer probably would have thought, oh can you get in there and do this and oh this will be a really cool shot. Can you sit down yeah. and cross your leg? Whereas I was more sort of what do you feel comfortable with? Yeah. You know doing that. I mean we've had uh bless a little heart uh Emily, when she was she was laid down on our stone floor yeah. with shells all around her hair because she wanted to get this shot, and we had to wrap her afterwards in a blanket. I mean, our best friend Damien had a gin bath with ice in it in the middle of. Uh, well, it was only first sort of open, yeah, so it yeah. would have been around January, February last year, and we had to wrap him up warm because he started getting sore on his back because of the ice. And it's like but things he, like that, but, but, but he wanted to do say, the shoe. I need to state yes. that he yeah. pushed to do real ice creams. When I said we've got perfectly fine fake ones, yes. he was adamant he wanted the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it was one of them that, but if I wasn't made aware of their, yes, you can see when somebody's uncomfortable, but like with you, I could sort of tailor with our location where we were going to shoot yeah. based on what you told me. Yeah. In the past, and it's it's the same with what we did. We ran a cosplay day where we had lots of cosplayers come down and sort of saying we knew there was going to be somebody in a wheelchair at the so start. We so we we first. made them not made them. We scheduled them and asked them to come in first, didn't they? Oh, so well, then well, they no, could, it wasn't just that they were they were they they struggled around crowds of people and stuff because yeah. they they had uh, other. So yeah. going on, and they made us aware of that. So we got them in before everyone arrived. Right. So, it so it was more one to one time. So then they could get their pictures, and they could be sort of leaving as the other groups yeah. were and coming in. If they wanted to stay and talk to everyone, they were welcome to. Yeah. It was their choice of whether they felt comfortable or not. But we didn't want to kind of bring them into a massive room full of people and go, "Hi, I know you've never done this before. Welcome to the madness." It just adds extra pressure, and yeah. especially, if, I mean, some models are do cosplay, but not all. Cosplayers, especially, are models. Yeah, and they're out to pose and aren't that comfortable in front of a camera, even yeah. though they get lots of pictures taken. But it's more it's, general public. Well, you no, do that more, pose, don't you're you? a cosplayer. Yes. And you're more comfortable having a photo taken when you're in cosplay. Well, yes. But and I think, even I think then, it's just I plan a couple of poses. But at the same time, is if I was in a studio having a picture taken in cosplay, I'd probably feel quite self conscious. Yeah. Because the focus is just on you, not yes. anyone else. Yeah. Whereas at a convention, it's just normally Tom Dick or Harry sort of going, oh, can I, oh your cosplay's really cool, can I get a picture? And you take a picture and you do, pose, done, bye, and you never see them again. And you never uh, you never see the pictures most of the time. But it's one of them that if I was going to a studio in that scenario, it would probably be, oh, all these lights and all flashing and the camera looks really aggressive with the massive lens on and I've got to have everything on me. And then it's putting the pressure on me. Mm -hmm. Which I get why a lot of people don't go to that side. It's why we sort of trying to schedule in cosplay sort of photography. But if you then know a diversion and worry about meeting people, as well as then well, I'm in a wheelchair, what are they going to think about that? I'm going to be able to pose like the character. It's you know, just I've, I've, oh, I've got quite levels of levels of levels of levels of stress in yeah, my So, like, I, I've got a few friends who 
have physical issues and mental health problems all combined together. And one of them I tried to get from the studio and they won't because they do not feel comfortable coming to the studio to have the photo taken. But they happily say meet outside somewhere because they feel like that's less pressure. Now, me personally, I prefer a studio where it's that like one on one. Because in, in, in location, there's always a risk of people. Yeah, there's always a risk of people. But it depends who you are and how you kind of feel in that environment, and that's what they want to do. So I said, okay, we'll arrange something when the weather's a bit better, because their wheelchair doesn't do very well in the wet weather. So they don't go out a lot during the winter, they just virtually online. Yeah. <laughs> So I think this is definitely something that we can talk about going forward in another episode because it's it's really interesting and we're sort of at the point where our time is sort of done. Trying to keep all the episodes quite short and sweet, but at the same time with enough information in. I mean, so. if there's anything that you think we've not discussed or kind of covered, please comment below and let us know. But um, we're all definitely, about but definitely disabilities and stuff is going to be a common sort of trend because it's yeah. what well, we I, I, I live with it, yes, yes. and a lot of my friends do. Um, what you find over the years when you're disabled is you end up with lots of disabled friends from going to different groups and different pain management teams and all sorts. So I know quite a few people. Yeah, so I definitely it's going to be a subject that we sort of follow. I mean, we're hoping in the next episode or the one after to actually have a new model yeah. that's just started in the industry, but she is also uh, disabled and sort of in it. I mean, we've worked with her at events and stuff, but it's to sort of get her in and see what she's been like yeah. as a new well, model. Well, well like, she discussed with me how she was worried, how she'd be accepted and stuff, yeah. and I was like, well, there is, there is an avenue that yeah. this is possible. And we're kind of seeing them go out and put themselves out there. And, and it's great to see sort of yeah. things. So we want to get her in and actually have sort of an interview with her sort of soon. But whether it's next one or the one after, we'll sort of see. We'll, see this, we'll pin this subject for sort of future ones. Well, yeah, thank you again for joining us for today. And we're going to be cheesy. Can you uh, like and subscribe? And comment. And comment. Yes. yes. Give us an idea, any ideas, any topics, any questions you want yeah. to ask. It was oh, like, this yeah. is mainly so we can engage with you guys and kind of have those open discussions that people don't really want to talk about throughout the industry and also kind of tell you about all the different avenues and different worlds you can find. Yeah. Uh, we are on all social media channels, Beyond Quirks. You can always find us on anything like that. To be fair, if you Google us, you spot Google it, like yeah. Beyond Clerks. Uh, we have oh, got... Uh, for those who don't know, we're based in the UK. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you can't follow us and comment and uh, give us ideas from uh, yeah. across the ponds. Yeah, Many so ponds. It's, it's, yeah, like, it might be completely that's not a problem. Want. It's just obviously we're probably never going to be able to shoot you. I don't know. You never yeah. know what's we chose. Yeah, you never know. We might be in America at some point doing a walk in and stuff like that. But yeah, so my comment... Just another shout out, we do have a Facebook group, which is we're trying to set up as a community. So if you do want to join, come say hello, you know, we'll want more one-to-one -one sort of chatting. But and like I said, message us on anything, it'll be us that responding. Yeah. It's not bots. And, and also, like. which I said on the last one, is if you prefer talking to someone who identifies as male or someone who identifies as female, you have a preferred thing, just say either Johnny or Gemma in your message and it'll be one of us who actually gets back to you if you want to talk to a particular person. Well, thank you again. You've been great. And this has been the Beyond Quirks podcast. Thank you.